When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. Hello and welcome to The Mission. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton. And like Mr. Marshall Falk said, this is football heaven. And we're just a few weeks out from Enshrinement Week, powered by Johnson Controls. And just a friendly reminder, please visit ProFootballHOF.com for all ticket packages and information. You don't want to miss out on the greatest gathering in football. Now, as we conclude our four-part series of Hall of Fame presenters, today we're joined by Mr. Mark Brunell, Jags legend and the quarterback coach for the Detroit Lions. Mark and Tony played together for the Jacksonville Jaguars from 1995 to 2001. Pacelli protected Brunell's blind side as one of the best left tackles in all of NFL history. The duel led the expansion Jaguars to the postseason in four straight seasons beginning in 1996, a season where Brunell led the NFL in passing yardage. It's an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Mark Bunnell joining us right here on The Mission. Mark, welcome to The Mission, sir. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Well, the wait is over. Your dear friend, the pride of Duval, is here in Canton, <laughs> Ohio. How pumped are you for him and his family, sir? I am so pumped. I think this is long overdue. Uh, we've been waiting for this moment for a long time and are absolutely thrilled that that uh, he is getting what uh, he deserves. Um, you know, I had a I had a, a front row seat uh, on in his career, got to be on the field with it with him, fortunate to be in the same huddle with him and see him firsthand uh, how he was as a player. And I'll just say this, he's, he's one of the best I've ever been around and uh, certainly the best offensive lineman I've ever played with. Um, so I, I'm so happy for him. It's, uh, it's again, it's just well-deserved. Uh, we're all thrilled. What does this honor mean to the Jacksonville community? It means a lot because it's something that uh, not only can Tony and his family and his friends celebrate, but the, but the Jacksonville community. Um, you know, if you if you know about Tony, um, you know that he's much more than a football player and the impact he has made uh, in Jacksonville through his foundation, through multiple charitable events, um, his personal sacrifices as far as his time and uh, his resources. He has poured his life into uh, this city. And uh, um, so when I say he goes uh, far beyond just a just a football player, that's what I mean. Um his involvement with the church and different events, his foundation, I can go on and on, but, uh, and it's something that we can all, again, celebrate. This is, this is for all of us. It's for Tony Baselli, of course, and, and the people that are close to him, but I think uh, uh, all of Northeast Florida can celebrate this one because it's, it really is one of their own getting into the hall of fame. Now, now, Mark, I have to ask you, how did Tony tell you that you will be doing the honors of presenting him here in Canton? You know, it's funny you say that because, you know, you would think that you would be asked you know, to be a presenter. <laughs> yes. I yes. was told. I was told I was going to be a presenter. And uh, we were having a conversation. This was a, a few months ago, I guess. And we were just catching up. We don't see each other like we uh, like we used to. Uh, and uh, so we you catch up every you know two or three weeks. And I asked about the kids. He asked about, you know, what's going on in, in my world. And, and, and uh, he asked about my kids. I talked to him. You know, we just catch up. And at the end, he says, hey, by the way, you're going to present me present uh, me at the Hall of Fame. I said, all right, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and I said, is that are you asking me? He says, no, I'm not really asking. You, I'm telling you. I said, all right. We both laugh. But <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I was told it is a huge privilege. It is an honor. I am flattered. Uh, there are others that he could have asked. And uh, um, so for me to get that opportunity, uh, that privilege, man, I think that's really cool. You know, I got to go back to July 29th, 1995. You and Tony oh. played in the Hall of Fame game right here in Canton, Ohio. What do you remember of that game? You know, it's funny that uh, I coached with the, with a guy that was a receiver uh, in that training camp, a guy named Johnny Morton. And uh, uh, this is what I remember from that game. I, I think we're, we're uh, 
we're driving, it's at the end, and this has nothing to do with Tony other than he was probably pretty upset, not as upset as I was. I overthrew a fade route in the corner to win it, and I overthrew Johnny Morton, who I'm coaching with uh, with the Lions right now, and uh, he remembers that, I remember that. I- Jackson goes down by six, and it's walked it out of the end zone. Uh, I, it's what sticks out uh, uh, to me on that game. We had an opportunity, opportunity to win it, and I just threw the ball a little too far, and if I just let up on a little bit, we might have won that game. That's wow. it. That's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a, true, you're, you're a true legend, Mark, because, you know, most guys I would have thought and said, yeah, I remember we had to come to training camp early, and we had to start the season off early, you know? Yeah. But you're talking yeah, well, about the perspective yeah, of yeah, opportunity. No I remember we reported we reported that year uh, up to Stevens Point, Wisconsin, because we're an expansion team. So we got an extra week and an extra game, all kinds of extra time uh, allowed uh, in training camp. I think we reported up up to training camp on July 8th and uh, uh, just just crazy. It was a long training camp. I'll tell you that. Wow, that's amazing. And when I look at these two expansion teams, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers, and Tony being the first Jaguar, and I know the late, great, rest in peace, Mr. Sam Mills uh, played with, with, played with the, 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 the Saints before coming to the Panthers. Um, but however, you had an opportunity to play against Mr. Mills. And if you could just speak on just how excited you for that organization to have a piece of history here in Canton as well. All right. of history here in Canton as well. No, it's just amazing. I mean, uh, he played with such a passion. Um, he was such a good leader and just a good man. And everywhere he went, uh, he just represented that organization so well. Um, there's football and then there's those qualities about a person that go way beyond football. And Sam, uh, uh, he embodied those, the work ethic, the uh, the leadership, like I mentioned, the passion for the game, the passion for life, uh, you know, the, the positive attitude. I mean, it just, he was, he was just amazing. And he was everything that you're looking for in a football player uh, and more great football player, but an even better person. You know, when God created a left tackle and Tony Baselli, if you could take us through that, describe that creation, what did he make? Well, I tell you, Tony, Tony had it all. Um, his strength was is that for as big as he is, six, eight, whatever he is, uh, what he played at, three, 15, I don't remember exactly, but he moved so well. His fundamentals, his footwork, his technique, he was just uh, gave that so much attention. Um, and his, he was not just a competitor, he was a fierce competitor. Mm. He was strong, he can move, um, he could do everything. But I think his, probably his, his, greatest quality was is that um uh, it was he didn't wasn't just going to do his job he wasn't just going to block you Mm. he wanted to uh destroy you he didn't want to just do his job he wanted to make sure everybody on that field knew that uh yeah if you were going up against him that day it was going to be a long day I mean he was he had some trash talk to him uh uh he he wasn't afraid to to say some things out there which was just fun to watch uh he was fierce he was uh physical he was uh he just got after it and you know he he was it was fun to watch you know i had a front row seat i got to see it and he was absolutely amazing there was nothing he couldn't do um he'd be mad at the uh defense he you know he, he'd be mad at me you know he'd be mad he just you When you were around Tony, you just knew that he was going to play with an absolute passion and he was going to give it his uh, everything to make sure that not only did he do his job, uh, block the guy in front of him, but he was he was he was going to absolutely do whatever he could to uh, just to annihilate the opponent. He was amazing.
you know, I mentioned in my lead that um, your organization went to four straight, four straight seasons of being um, 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 postseason, four straight postseasons. But in 1996, you know, you led the NFL in NFL passing. And also, too, you went to the AFC championship that year. What made the 1996 season so special? You know, I think what made it special was is that we weren't I, we were surprised a lot of people that perhaps even ourselves. I think there was one point during that season, we were, we were three and six. And I think we got to four and seven. I think I got to four and seven and you know, you're at four and seven. Uh, you've got a bunch of young players, uh, inexperienced players, players that were getting better and, and uh, guys that were emerging as, as future stars in the NFL, Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell, um, guys like that. And I think the thing that stood out the most is that we made on we went on a run at the end, won the last five games, and then just kind of got into the playoffs and and had a couple of good wins to get us that AFC Championship game. But uh, just being able to overcome the odds and to do something as a team that nobody really gave us a chance to do—that's what jumps out at me. We had you know this was only our second year uh, in existence, and to get to the AFC Championship game. Uh, with our group of guys, uh, I look back and and uh, think, man, that was, that was really cool. And it wasn't really as much about talent because uh, there were teams that had more talent than we did. Right. It was about togetherness and accountability and work ethic and just going out there and playing hard and playing for one another. Uh, those are things that really jump out to me at uh, about that 96 year. You, you mentioned some of those key um, weapons on offense, but, you know, you look back in 1995 and the cornerstone of building an offense, obviously you need in a phenomenal signal caller such as yourself and a cornerstone of that blind side, that left tackle. But for you, you played with the, with the Green Bay Packers two years before coming, before coming to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Talk about what you learned um, playing alongside Brett Favre in that organization. Well, I'll tell you, I, I learned a lot from Brett, um, and I I got a little mop-up time while I was with the Packers. Got to play a little bit uh, against the Vikings one game. Brett went down and, and got an opportunity to get on the field a little bit. Um, but this is what I learned from from the Packers. One, Well, there's a few things. One, I learned about the NFL game uh, from Mike Holmgren, the head coach. Yeah. Um, had an incredible staff for the Packers at that time. John Gruden, Steve Mariucci. Dick Duron, Ray Rhodes, and Andy Reid, the list goes on and on of, of guys that go on, that went on to be just great coaches in their own right. Um, so I learned a lot about the game, how to play it at that level. But what, I, what really jumped out at me was just watching Brett Favre. Now, this was early Brett Favre. This was before he was a Super Bowl MVP, before he was a Super Bowl champion, um, before the NFL MVP, all, all that stuff. Uh, he struggled a bit. He was still pretty young. And so he threw a lot of touchdown passes. He threw a lot of interceptions. He had some good games and some not so good games. So I learned a lot from that. But what jumps out at me was that he played the game so hard. Man, he played hard. Now, it wasn't always pretty, but he competed. Uh, and he never quit. Man, he would sacrifice his body. He'd take off running and dive to get that first down. He'd take some big hits, and he'd pop right back up. Such a tough competitor. Um, and, uh, and I, I watched him and I thought, if I'm going to make it in the NFL, I have to, I have to play the game like that. Mm. That's how you're supposed to play the game, how Brett Favre played it. Um, he just gave it everything he had. And again, in those early years, it wasn't always pretty, but man, he was, he was a competitor. He was a tough competitor and there was never any quit in him at all. And so I learned a lot from Brett. I owe Brett a lot. I have to ask you because from 1993 to 2011, 19 years in the league at the young age of 41, I got to say you were Tom Brady before there was Tom Brady of playing. What was the secret to your success? Well, let's hold off on any Tom Brady, Mark Brunel comparisons. All right. Let's, <laughs> I don't think we need to go that far. I, the the uh, longevity. Sure. There are, there are some similarities, but that's that, where I was going, Mark, that, with, with, with all due respect. Know, that, that's where I was I trying to say. So thank you for checking me. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was about the longevity. Uh, the difference between me and well, there's a lot of differences between me and Tom. Tom has played all these years. Right. Um, in my 19 year career, I think, you know, maybe most of it was as a starter, but maybe half, maybe a little less than half was as a backup. But anyway, I was fortunate to land in some good situations after my starting 
years were over because I wanted to play as long as I, I could. I loved everything about it. I loved the locker room and the road trips and game day, of course, even when I wasn't playing, being in a support role, uh, being on a team. Um, there's plenty of years where you're not able to play football. And I wanted to just be around as long as I could. And there were some teams at the end of my career that were looking for a veteran backup to kind of help out the young kid, uh, specifically the, the New York Jets. Um, I backed up uh, Drew Brees and got a Super Bowl out of that. Now, Drew Brees didn't need a, a veteran backup at all. Drew Brees didn't need a thing, but I was just glad I could, I could be there to experience that. Um, so I got to play a long time, and I'm so grateful. Wonderful relationships, uh, just some uh, memories that will last the rest of my life. Uh, I look back on my career, I'm um, grateful is the word, thankful that, that some coaches gave me an opportunity and uh, stuck with me at times, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. You gave so much back to the game that, you know, as soon as you stopped um, playing in 2013, you started coaching high school football and you was blessed to coach your son. Talk about that and making that transition and what that was like coaching at Episcopal High School. Yeah, it was it was it was perfect for me um, because as a player, as playing in the NFL, you, you do miss a lot. You miss a lot of time. Uh you know, with your family. So when I got done playing, as much as I wanted to coach, I wanted to coach uh, at a place where I could be home. I wanted a family-friendly coaching job. And I got that at Episcopal. and was able to coach two of my sons, wow. uh, Joseph and Luke. And so it was great. Um, I was home every night for dinner. Um, Friday nights are pure. High school football on Friday nights is just awesome. So to be able to experience that with my sons and, and a coaching staff, and uh, it was great. And uh, I, I'm very, again, I'm grateful. I got to stay in the game uh, and at the same time, be able to spend a lot of time with my family. And you completed your uh, first year with the Detroit Lions. What was your season like? How did you like you know, going through that process of being on the NFL level? I love, I love the process. And um I love who I'm working with. I'm working for Dan Campbell, our head coach, who's absolutely amazing. Just amazing. We were teammates in New Orleans uh, for a year. And um, I'm thankful for that opportunity. And I've learned a lot. Um, coaching and playing is different now, especially the hours. The hours are, are, are night and day. And I don't mind those. Um, I love the game. I like helping put together a, a plan. I love my quarterback room. I get a chance to coach. Jared Goff, who's amazing to work with, uh, the, the entire quarterback room, uh, just great kids, smart, hardworking guys. They make my job easy, but it's great. Um, I think, you know, that there's one thing as a player is that you can always get better. You're always working on your craft, your footwork, your mechanics, reading defenses and, and all of this, all of this. The same as a, as a coach, you're always working on your craft and you're always trying to be a better coach for one specific reason. So you can be uh, the best resource and teacher uh, for your players. And, uh, you know, Jared Goff, uh, um, I thought, did really well, particularly the last half of the season last year. And just to see him go up there and compete and play well, it was very rewarding. I, I just thought, golly, I, that's, this is awesome. You know, to see a kid that you're coaching go up there and perform at a high level, uh, that's what it's all about. Um, but we struggled as far as our record. We'll be mm -hmm. better this year. We'll win more games. And uh, I expect the Lions to, as, year go, as the years go on with Dan Campbell, only get better and better. Motor City has some amazing fans, true blue yes. blood, blue collar fans, great fans. And, you know, Mark, before we let you go, if you could just talk about what are you looking forward to most of coming here in Canton in a few weeks? I'm looking forward to seeing Tony Baselli. Um, Go through the whole process, um, the ceremonies, the events. Um, I'm looking forward to him wearing that gold jacket just to see it on him for the first time and see the emotion that comes out and, and, and watch his family. And I mean, it truly is a celebration. Um, it's the most exclusive club in sports, in my opinion. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a while. He's been told no many, many, for many years now, five, six, seven years. He's been, he's been told, no, this isn't the year. 
this is the year. And I think the timing's perfect. And uh, just to be up there with him on that stage when he, when he sees the bus and, he, and we put the jacket on him, um, to see him embrace his brothers, his fellow Hall of Fame brothers up there. Um, I just, man, I can't wait. I, I, I absolutely can't wait to see it all, all happen. Well, Mark, we can't wait to celebrate you as well right here in Canton, Ohio, in the next few weeks when you come here for Enshrinement Week, powered by Johnson Control. And we thank you so much for joining us right here on the mission. Mr. Mark Brunell, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.